Stop counting bubbles. We hear it from people all the time when they, and they say, my bubbles are down to two or three per second or minute or hour or whatever. And wow, please just stop counting bubbles because all a bubble means, if it comes out of your airlock, that's what I'm talking about, bubbles in your airlock. All a bubble in your airlock means is that something happened at some point, okay? It could have been a month ago that fermentation was happening and now it's just letting those gases out still. The temperature could have changed. Any number of things can be going on. Does it mean that it's definitely not done? No, but it's not a definite sign that it's finished. To know how your brew is completely finished is very, very simple. You need a specific piece of equipment. It's called a hydrometer. Let me see if I can grab one. You need one of these, or a refractometer, or a digital one, or any number of devices that will read specific gravity or bricks. That's mostly what people use. Play-Doh is another one. I like to use specific gravity, and that's why I like the hydrometer. This happens to be a glass one. Um, they do make them in various styles, and if you've watched our show, you, you know this. But a hydrometer gives you a reading, and it gives you the original reading of your brew. Let me explain more after I put this away so I don't break it. There's a common idea that, oh, well, I don't need to take readings because I don't care about the ABV. I don't care how much alcohol I'm making. Okay, and that's perfectly fine and that's respectable. But knowing the original gravity and the ending gravity tells you a lot more than just how much alcohol you made. For instance, if you're using a yeast that only has a certain alcohol tolerance, which they all have a certain alcohol tolerance and they're all different, and you have to look that up on Google to find out because nobody puts it on the packets, but that's another video. But say you're using a yeast with a certain alcohol tolerance and you put in a high enough amount of sugars, honeys, or juices, fruits, whatever, to create enough alcohol that would be far beyond what that yeast is capable of. Having an original gravity would tell you, oops, I made a mistake. This is probably not going to work the way I think it should, or vice versa. Wow, how did I only get this low of a gravity? I don't understand what happened. It gives you um, an actual physical measurement so that you can have an idea of where things are. That's original gravity. That's just the first one. So it's important. But the really important one is the final gravity reading. This is the clincher. This is it. This is the important one. Why do I say that? It's because if you know, because you took an original gravity, that this should go dry. This should end up pretty much around 1.000. And you take your reading and it's at 1.050. You know something's wrong, okay? Something's wrong. Or it's just not finished yet. So. If it's at 1.000, you can say, all right, well, it's working. This is where it should be. But wait, there's more. Because that first reading is just kind of like, you just picked a spot out of time. You don't really know, is it completely done? Is it mostly done? Is it partially done? Where is it in the scale of doneness? To know if it's really done, wait one more week and take another reading. They should read the same if they are even a couple points different. It's not done. It should never go up from that first reading, by the way. It should always go down. It should always be a lower reading. So like, say you got 1.004 the first time. If it's at 1.000 now, well, maybe it's done, but it went down four points in a week. Give it another week. Check it again. If it's at 1.000 now, now it's done. That's how you know when your brew is finished. Those bubbles will lie to you. They are telling you that the temperature went up by two degrees, so I'm creating more pressure and putting out bubbles. That's literally what will happen. You can get a fermenter, fill it with water, put an airlock in it, and if the temperature goes up or down, it will bubble one way or the other. Therefore, it does not mean fermentation is still occurring. Okay, so that's why we, we always say don't count bubbles, don't really worry about bubbles. And you know, many buckets don't seal and things like that. So you never even get to see bubbles, but it's okay. They're great entertainment value. That's about the thing I really look at them for. The, to me, they're just an indicator. If the bubbles stop, I go, okay, maybe it's time to take a reading. Those readings are so important. And it, it kind of, it's a little disheartening every time I hear somebody say, oh, I can't be bothered to take readings. Okay, well, if you can't be bothered to take readings, I'm really sorry, but you're missing out on quite a bit of information that you should be getting from your brew to know, is it started? Is it just in the beginning phases? Is it, you know, coming close to the end? Is it slowing down or is it finished? You don't actually know. 
And I'm sorry, there are very, very, very few people on the planet who can know by taste, by tasting a brew. I, it just doesn't make sense. Professional winemakers use hydrometers. They use refractometers to test these things. So the typical home brewer, I'm really sorry. You probably can't do it by tasting. I'm not trying to be negative here, but I'm just trying to illustrate a point that use the hydrometer, take two readings. That's the real key. If you forget your original gravity or forget to take one, I'll forgive that. I don't think it's a great thing, but I'll forgive that. But take those ending gravity readings. The number one question that we get on our channel all the time is, well, no, the number two question. The number one is how much alcohol did I make? The number two question is how do I know when it's done? Or it's been six days, nine days, 20 days, 30 days, whatever it's been. I'm not seeing bubbles anymore. Is it finished? What do we always say? Take a reading, because without that reading, we can't tell you if it's done. You can't tell if it's done and you're sitting there looking right at it. You can't tell. You don't know what those yeast are doing. Yeast can't read and they're microscopic. You can't see them anyway. So take two readings, okay? This is, I'm gonna go over this whole thing one more time. Quick summary. Your original gravity tells you, are you in the ballpark? Are you making something that's gonna be way too much alcohol for your yeast or something that's way too low and maybe you wanna add a little bit more or is it right in the range? If you're not sure how to figure all that stuff out, we have videos explaining all those things, link in the description below, talking about stalling, overdoing, underdoing. This is just supposed to be a really simple, quick video and I'm babbling way too much already. So we have original gravity. Then when you see those bubbles start to slow down and you think, Okay, might be, might be finished, right? Take your first final gravity reading, your first final gravity reading. Write that down. Wait a week, check it again. If they are identical and they are in the normal range that you expect them to be based on the original gravity that you had, it's done. If they're not, it's not done yet. Wait another week, do it again. If it still changes, wait another week and do it again. It's okay. Yeast don't have watches or calendars, nor do they care about time. So if it takes it five days one time and 20 days another time, that's just because you had a different batch or slight difference in yeast. You had different fruits, different honeys, different temperatures, different air in the house. Any number of factors can actually affect how long it takes for fermentation to occur. So don't let that bother you. Sometimes it'll happen really quick. Sometimes it takes longer. It's all good, but take two readings. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.